In this video, we'll start our section on kinematics. Kinematics is the study of things in motion. So we're going to look at how things move when they're moving at uh, both constant velocities and when they're changing speed, when they're accelerating. Uh, and to start, we're going to talk about a concept called frame of reference. Frame of reference is simply the point that we choose to call zero on our coordinate system. Okay? Whatever zero meters is, since we're usually talking about a distance. Okay. So that's the point that we're comparing everything to. So if I have an object that's over here, then it is that many meters from zero. So we're always comparing something to uh, a certain point, a uh, frame of reference. Now it gets a little tricky when our frame of reference can move. Okay. For example, uh, you can ask yourself the question, are you sitting still right now? Well, the answer is it depends on your frame of reference. If we're talking about you sitting still just in your chair, as you sitting on your chair, yeah, you're sitting still if your frame of reference is the ground. But now take that frame of reference and make it the whole Earth. Now are you sitting still? Well, not really, because the Earth is rotating, so you do have some speed. So you can see how changing your frame of reference can change your answer to these problems. Uh, usually it's not something you have to worry about in problems. Frame of reference is usually pretty obvious. It's usually just where you start, and we're comparing from where you start to where you end. So the first thing we need to talk about uh, when it comes to studying motion is displacement. Okay? Uh, displacement is going to be our way of finding the position of an object, where it's located. Uh, so the displacement of an object describes how the position of an object changes. Okay? So it's a change in position. With displacement, we get our first equation. So how you would calculate displacement, or delta x, would be x final minus x naught. Okay. So delta x here would represent our displacement, or our change in position. x final is our final position. Okay. How far away we are from our point of reference at our final point. And x naught is our initial position. You can kind of think of x naught, right, with this being a little zero here, essentially, uh, meaning that's where we're starting. That's our zero point. So our initial position minus our final position gives us our displacement, or how far away we are from where we started. Now, displacement is similar to another quantity that we're used to called distance. Okay, Distance would be the total length of the path traveled. So a slightly different definition than what displacement is, but a, a very similar one. Okay, so here's a, a situation where they might be the same. If I start here at position one, so x naught, and then I travel from here to here in a straight line to x final, then the distance that I cover is equal to the length of that line, but displacement is also equal to the length of that line, since that's the total length of the path traveled. It describes how my position has changed from here straight to here. Now, where distance and displacement can be different. Okay, If I start here at x naught, and then I travel a path and I'm going to wind all the way around and end up back where I started. So x final is the same position as I started. Now, my distance would be the entire length of this line. So you'd have to measure this length of the line, and that would be the distance that I've traveled. Displacement, however, delta x, well, by definition and by equation, is x final minus x initial, how far I've gone from where I've started. Well, those two things are equal. So let's say that that was a, a distance of 2 meters. x naught was 2 meters. Well, x final is also 2 meters. So 2 meters minus 2 meters would give me a displacement of zero meters. So I can have a displacement of zero, but have an actual distance. Okay. So distance and displacement can be equal if it's a straight line path. If not, distance will always be greater than my displacement, Okay, because it's going to be a longer path traveled. So maybe here's another example of distance versus displacement. Okay, so let's say I'm going to start here at x naught, and I'm going to travel two meters this way and two meters this way, and two meters this way, and I'm going to end at x final over here. So what we need to calculate 
is, well, what's my distance? What distance have I covered? So distance is the total length of the pass traveled. So I went 2 meters plus 2 meters plus 2 meters, so 2 meters 3 times, would give me a distance equal to 6 meters. Okay. My displacement, however, delta x equals x final minus x naught. Well, delta x is going to be, let's say we started at a position of 0 meters. And this would have been, if we were to measure from here to here, that would be 2 meters away. So 2 meters minus 0 meters would give me a displacement of 2 meters. So there's another place that uh, displacement is different than distance. Now let's point out one more uh, important thing. So we went from x naught at 0 meters to x final, which was 2 meters away. Uh, let's see what would happen maybe if we change this. So instead uh, of going that way, now this, instead of being x final, is going to be x naught, and this is going to be x final. So we just went the opposite way around the circle. Well, if you look at our math here, delta x equals x final, which would be at, z at a position of 0 meters, minus my initial position, which is right here, and that would be 2 meters. And if we follow the math there, that actually gives me a negative 2 meters. So we have a negative displacement there. That's perfectly okay. Okay, you can have a negative displacement, you can have a positive displacement. That's just telling you which direction you are from zero, to the left or to the right of zero. However you set your frame of reference, it could tell you you went one way around the square, okay, versus the opposite way. Uh, it, it's just information about how you traveled. So two words we want to become familiar with here are a vector and a scalar. Okay. So a vector, by definition, has both a magnitude and direction, okay. whereas a scalar has a magnitude only. Okay. So what does this actually mean? Uh, displacement would be a vector because it has a magnitude and a direction. Okay. Uh, the direction, you might ask yourself, well, how do we know the direction? Well, that's what we're talking about with maybe positive or negative, right? Positive would mean one direction, negative would mean the other. So it has both the magnitude, the value, say two meters, three meters, four meters, whatever, and it has the positive or negative, so it's telling me which direction it went. Distance, however, might be a scalar, because it's just a, a path length, right? How, how far did we go? You couldn't have a negative distance, it's just the total length of the path, so it's adding it all up, always gives you that positive number. Okay, so we need to keep in mind the difference between a vector and a scalar as we move on. Okay, vectors can be positive or negative. We're using those positive and negative to indicate direction. Okay, we have this tendency to, to be afraid of negative numbers and to think something's wrong if it's a negative number when it relates to a real-life situation. It doesn't. All that's telling us is something about direction. Is it going this way or is it going that way? Is it going left? Is it going right? Is it going up? Is it going down? Depending on what we're using in that case, the positive and negative are telling us that information. Since we're going to be talking about direction a lot, uh, it's important that we know what kind of coordinate system we're working in here. Okay, so if we take something like that, and then we make a, a graph out of it like this, okay, it's just kind of our standard xy plane where we have positive y, that direction, negative y, positive x, and negative x. Okay, and that's going to be kind of our, our standard coordinate system. For now, we're only going to be working in one dimension, okay, which means maybe we just have air, you know, objects that are moving you know, just this way along our axis or maybe falling down out of the sky this way, uh, not, say, in both directions at the same time. That's something that we'll talk about later. So you can see a little bit that this is how uh, positive and negative come into play, right? If I'm moving this direction, I'm moving in the positive direction. If I'm moving this way, I'm moving in the negative direction. If I'm moving this way, positive. This way, negative. So it's just important that we kind of keep this coordinate system in the back of our mind. That way we can uh, you know, know which direction we're going because that actually means something important in this class.